Zion. Welcome back to the JSFL. We're here. Monday night, week 10. We got a nice one underway. We got the Minneapolis Fishers hosting the Cleveland Pirates. We're looking to get this one all the way in the Minneapolis night. The Pirates coming into this game 1-8 and eight, and the Fishers 4-5. Fish is trying to keep in for that contest with the playoffs. Cleveland Pirates just trying not to get relocated. They're up against Charlotte in that department. So let's see how this goes here. So here we go. Should be a good one in Minneapolis. If Cleveland doesn't win this one, relocation looking like it's going to be happening. But for the Minneapolis Fishers, this game's even bigger, really. I just talked about the franchise being removed, but they're trying to stay in the playoffs, make that first playoff of their career. And this game has a big role in that. So we'll look to get that underway here in a few moments. Few moments from kickoff here, and Minneapolis Fishers will get started with the ball. We'll see if they can have a nice opening drive. Kickoff underway here in Minneapolis, and returning is Carlton Sanchez, number ten receiver, receiving yards coming into this game. And here comes the rookie quarterback, taking number three overall, no, number four overall, it's Tony Dackerson. One, two, 215 completions at 310 attempts, 2,365 yards, 11 touchdowns, 8 picks, and no rushing game. So Dackerson, looking pretty solid in this first season, has held a nice, powerful offensive attack with his Fishers, and is looking to continue that down stretch and probably make, or hopefully, not probably, make it to the playoffs. So first and 10 for this high powered Fishers offense, and we'll see what they can do on this drive. Taking the lamb, and it's fake handoff, and here goes Hoskins in the backfield. And Hoskins is down, so we'll be back in a moment as we look at that injury. First play of the night, and that's not good. It looks like Hoskins will be returning soon, so no big... Nothing on that injury. Here's H Hoskins. I mean, Daxon, my bad. It is incomplete on the first down play. Let's look at this Minneapolis Fishers offense. Number three in the league. Rush offense, they're number 10. But passing offense, number three. So a high powered pass attack with Tony Daxon throwing the ball to Wilbur Lamb and Carlton Sanchez. He makes in Avonis and Andy Gibson in there if you'd like, but those are his two main wideouts. Both top 10 receiving yards in the league. Third down and 12 for the Fishers offense. Two unsuccessful plays would be on third down. Going sideline and hit at the line of scrimmage. Gets three yards on the play. It's fourth down and nine. Big tackle there on Ronaldo Hoskins. Made by Ben Mullins. Veteran corner. Play there by Mullins makes it fourth down. Here is the punt, and it will be returned at the 14. Returning it past the 20, still fighting is Frank Jog to the 25 yard line, and that's where they will start. So let's see Kendall Hastings, the second overall selection in the draft. 173 completions after 282 attempts. He's got 1,974 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 12 picks. And no rushing game. So he hasn't been as successful as Tony Jackson. But you can't make the argument. He doesn't have any weapons. 
He does have stud wide receiver Mario Bowen, but the rest of them are rookies or not great receivers. He does have stud tight end Sheldon Larson. But still, Hastings, oh, whatever the main thing between these two quarterbacks is offensive line. Cleveland's is not going to do for most starting QBs. First and 10, Hastings, throwing, caught, and gets it for a first down, looks like, to the 35. But no, they're going to call it second and one. Percy. Alright, that person. Pablo Godwin with the catch. Clay Ramirez on the tackle, second down and one. Second down, running his jog. Frank Jog to the 41. And now Frank Jog is down. So it will take a play to look at that injury, but we'll have to look at Frank Jog now. Both the starting running backs have went down already. Looks like he's on the bench, so he looks fine. First down and 10. So the rookie victorious will now be the running back. At least for this play. First down and 10. Victorious is the back. First down and 10. Here's a uh, play action. And pressure! And he's going down! Erwin Badger on the play. And it's a Minneapolis Fishers sack. Erwin Badger coming from Kansas State's been great on this defensive line of Minneapolis. That is another great play for the young man. Getting right through this weak Cleveland line in the QB. Erwin Badger, that's sack number seven on for him on the season. Probably the best defensive tackle in the game. Second out 19. Here's a run. Victorious. Again, it took a 36, five yards. Let's look at this Cleveland offense. The Pirates offense is number ten, no, number nine in the league. Eight in rushing offense, passing offense. It's number five, surprisingly. They've been able to throw the ball effectively with their young wide receivers and Kendall Hastings' deep ball accuracy, even though they have the poor offensive line. Here is Hastings, rowing over the middle, caught, Larson, he has room, 10, 20, touchdown, 2010 I meant, 8, 64 yards for Sheldon Larson, and that is a Cleveland Pirates touchdown. Able to use that big playability that we just talked about, and that might be why this team's number 5 in that air attack, big plays like that, and for Sheldon Larson, Number touchdown, number four on the season. This gets on top of the defense, and the tight end has wheels, let me tell you. What a play by Sheldon Larson. Here's the PAT now. Is up and good. That drive, five plays, seven four yards, and one minute and forty seconds. Short drive there after a sixty-four yard touchdown by Sean Larson, and the Pirates have the first score on this football game. But Minneapolis team trying to compete into the playoffs. That's not what we want to see here. Here's the kick as the Fishers Dolphins will get it back. Turned by Hop I mean Sanchez. Sanchez to the 28, and that's where the Fishers Dolphins will start. 
26 yards per turn for Carlton Sanchez. Goes down Minneapolis. First down and ten now for Daxon in this Minneapolis offense. Tony Daxon throwing and it's caught. Gets it to Avon. It's ten, two yards on the play. And let's look at this Cleveland defense. The Pirates defense ranking number seven in the league against the run. They're number six, so in the top half. But against the pass, gets a little more rough. Number eight, but not bad at all. Well, a young, your secondary. Some of them are older players, but still work to do to get them to be a contending team. Because that's show on offense, defense, this team should be a middle of the road team, but they just can't convert these close games to win. Sometimes, some of them aren't even close. Sometimes they get blown out of the water. But here's Hoskins running to the forty. That's a good play for Ronaldo Hoskins. And we're actually going to look at Frank Jai's injury. We'll be back in just a moment. So by the look of it, it looks like Frank Jar will be back after halftime. He's suffering from a pectoral strain. So it's first down and 10. Fishers. Here's Hoskins with the run. Juke move, Hoskins. To the 44. Second and six for the Fishers. Second out and six now for the Fishers. Here is Hoskins. Nice little cutback. And he's going to stumble for a first down to the 50 yard line. Oh, wait. Third down inches. You say he's top one, couple inches short. As Ben Mullins is going to get credit with the tackle. 50 yard line. Big play here for the Fishers. Trying to get a conversion. Here's play action. Dackerson throwing and oh, dropped. So two of the Fishers dropped that one. And it's fourth down. Bounce off. I think that was Lamb and Snyder's hands. Fourth down in inches. That bounced off Wilbur Lamb's hands. Snyder had a chance to reel it in, but couldn't. And it brings up fourth down. Looks like he had it, but the collision makes him drop it. Could have been called a fumble, but it's just an incomplete pass. Fourth down is the punt unit. It's going to come on, so no risky moves here by Minneapolis. And it's the punt, the second of the night, and this Cleveland defense playing pretty good so far. Punt's going to be taken in at the three. Wow. Nice pin deep. He's going to pin out of bounds, right to the three-yard line, for the Cleveland offense to try to move the ball once again. This time a much harder task ahead. First down, 10 to 3 yard line now for this Cleveland offense. And maybe try and run it a little bit up the middle. See if Victorious, that rookie running back, can do anything with it. First down, 10. Running Victorious to 6, no, 5. Let's look at this Minneapolis defense. Fisher's defense is number 10 in the league, so not too hot. Against the run, they're number 7, so right in the bottom half. But against the pass, number 10, so they do struggle in the secondary department. We'll see if they can have what it takes to deal with Kendall Hastings in this passing attack. This last drive, they couldn't because they let the big play happen to um, Larson, which they want to probably prevent more than anything. But you also gotta watch out for Mario Bowen. He's got big playability. Second down seven. Have a little more breathing room at the five. Hastings gonna roll out. Don't want to get sacked in the end zone. Gets a throw to the twelve and makes it a more manageable third down in inches now. As he gets it to 
the guy we just talked about, Mario Bowen, his first catch of the night. He's also in the top 10 for receiving yards coming into this week. As he is at number 9. Right in front of Carlton Sanchez. Here's third down. Hastings rolling out. Throwing incomplete. Both teams try to play action on third down and inches. Both of them do not work. So, fourth down, and we'll see if Cleveland gets risky with it, even though at their own well. They will not, so a smart move by the Cleveland Pirates is they're going to punt it on fourth down. Here to the defense has pitched two punting drives on its Minneapolis third ranked offense. A juke by Sanchez, and Sanchez in the open room to the 45 yard line. 26 yards per return. First down and 10 now for Minneapolis Fishers. First down and 10. Here's a run up the middle with Ronaldo Hoskins kind of pushing to the 48. And that's a seven yard gain, second down and three. Second down and three now for the Minneapolis Fishers. Here's a run, it's Hoskins. Plowing for a first down to the 44. He's got six carries, 30 yards, averaging five off a carry. Pretty good start for Renal Hoskins. Roy Clean, his second tackle. Jackerson. The throw caught on the sideline by Wilbur Lamb to the 38. And that's his best throw of the night, second down and four. Or his longest pass of the night. Six yards to Lamb. Two tackles now, as I think Ben Mullins got in there for the system. So it's a 38 now. The Spitzer's offense starting to try to make a drive here. Play action. It's going to be a screen and hit and knocked out of Yvonne Ifson's hands. Good play on the ball, third down and four. Great play there, brings up third down. And we'll see what this Minneapolis Fishers offense has in store for us. Dackerson, throwing, middle, cut. Well, Snyder has the leverage. First down of the 22 for the Minneapolis Fishers. Well, Snyder, his first catch is going to be for 16 yards, and Gary Riley can't get there in time. First down and 10 now for the Fishers. Here is a run. Hoskins up the middle to the 19. Three yards on the game. Second down and seven. Second down and seven now. Dackerson throwing middle. Caught. Hit before the first down, seven yards on the game though for Avon Ifson. Third down inches once again for this Minneapolis Swishers offense. Here's third down inches. Rowing, Dackerson, and intercepted! 
going the other way now as it's Roy Kleon for the pick. And what a big play for Cleveland. Letting Minneapolis into the red zone, but not letting them out. As they get the pick, what a big play. Ackerson, interception, number nine on the year. Here comes Hastings. As he looks pretty solid today. Last time, couldn't get out of their own green zone, I guess you could say. Opposite of red. But even though green zone doesn't really want him where you want to be. We couldn't get out of there, but has more room to work now from the 20. So we'll see what he can do on this drive. First down and 10 at the 20 yard line for the Cleveland Pirates. Gonna fake the handoff to Victorious. Blowing and incomplete once again. Started the game off 3 for 3, 80 yards and a touchdown. The last two throws have been incomplete though. Here's second down and 10. Hastings. That's the row over the middle. Caught. That's his rookie receiver, Amari Talent. First down and 10. It's about to say East Eagles must have clean pirates from his East Eagles day back in college. 18 yards for Amari Talent. He gets the catch. Here's first down and 10 now for the Clean Pirates. Might be the last play of this first quarter. Hastings firing and caught. Nice reception by Amari Talent. Six yards, second down and four. Two catches for Talent now. Two catches, 24 yards. Keep Singleton with his third tackle of the night. That's the end of the first quarter. It's seven nothing here in Minneapolis as the Clean Pirates have a shocking lead on the Minneapolis Fishers at Minneapolis too. Second down and four. That's coverage at the top of your screen. Here is Victorious running, still fighting to the 45. Two yards on a pretty good run, actually, by Victorious. Third down two. Taylor Lopez credit him with the tackle. We're down and two now for the Cleveland Pirates trying to get a first down here. Let's remove the ball okay on this drive so far. 25 yards. They have been moved. And they keep it going. Play action. Hasting. Third chain. Pressure is starting to come. Creeping in on him. Throws it. Downfield. And incomplete. The pressure knocks it away. Looking for number 29. That's it. I, would, I need to see what that is. I don't even know. I think that might be Josh Bowden. A good play by Jeffrey Lee. Maybe, oh, that might be Bar Mario Bowen. We're going to look here as we see who got the pass or dropped it. There was pressure starting to come in from Lance Bennett. But Hastings did get away instead of taking the sack. It looks like he's going to get the catch here, but good hustle by Lee. Yeah, it was Mario Bowen. So, good play by Jeffrey Lee. And fourth down. The punt unit comes out for fourth down. And the Minneapolis Swishers get the ball back in the battle of punts. 
39, it goes, so not that great of a punt. First down, Minneapolis. Jackson just started out this game 5 for 9, 33 yards, and a pick. So he needs to snap himself back here. Get his team going because the playoffs are on the line. Not necessarily this game, but this game would help a long ways. Fight it as they're fighting against the Houston Enforcers. And I think even the LA Earthquake too. No, wait, not LA. I need to see I need to see what that is. See in second here. First down ten. Jackson and hold in. Big catch. Jump ball for Lowell Snyder. Oh, the Atlanta Predators, but they're actually fighting for the division, so that really doesn't count. I'll we'll see here. <laughs> Second down four, running Hoskins and Ducks. Curves does something, but he gets it to the 48. Eight carries, 40 yards, averaging that five per carry. First down and 10. As Ronaldo Hoskins, showing that he can get very good. Yeah, they're fighting against Houston for that spot right now. It's the main contender. First down, 10. Hoskins running to the 44, and he's got it. Second down, 7 3 yard pickup. Shelton with the tackle. Dustin Shelton. But yeah, F Fishers fighting against Houston for that number six seed, as Atlanta has the number four seed because of their division. So yeah, it's between Minneapolis and Houston, really. Second down, seven. Running Hoskins. Gonna get to the full 37 as he reaches over 50 yards in his first half. First down and 10. Roy Klee and three tackles. First down is this Minneapolis offense is really chugging along with Ronaldo Hoskins. I think they need to stick to that kind of game style for now, at least. I know running the ball isn't their best way to move the ball this season, but. Looks like it's working against this Cleveland defense. Here's another run, Hoskins, and he's going to get to the 32. Five yards, second down, five. Libert Ellis on the tackle. As Minneapolis is in field goal range once again. Now with the running of Hoskins. Ruben Page, the back on this one, the rookie, fourth rounder from South, and he's going to get stopped. Only two yard gains, not terrible, but third down and four. Gary Riley in on the tackle. So third down and four. And as we see what happens here on the third down play. Here's Jackson throwing. Gonna throw to pay I mean, Hoskins, but he's gonna get put in the backfield for two yards. And it's fourth down and five. So a long field goal probably coming up on the way, and we'll see if he can nail it or not. Fourth down five. Here is a 49 yarder. Big play. And he's not got it. Wow, short. Cleveland keeps them scoreless. And they'll take the ball all the way to 39. Hayes sings. 5 for 8, 104 yards, and a touchdown. He's been pretty good so far. That's his team up, and at least a field goal would really make them feel pretty good. First down and 10. Running victorious to the 45. 
six yards, second down and four. Here's second down four. Victorious running. He's got room. Nine. First down. No, third down one. They keep saying it's first down, but they keep stopping him short. Third down one. Renee Galvin, the rookie defensive end on the tackle. Here's third down one. Running victorious has got room. Victor victorious to the 24 and a big run open by Cleveland's offensive line, which is kind of new. Referee leap with the tackle first down and 10. First and ten. Here is a run with Victorious getting it to the twenty-two. Two yards on the game, seven carries, forty-eight yards. It's come pretty good. Brad Gomez on the tackle. Here is second down eight. Running. 18 is Ray Wilkerson. Third string running back, third down at four. Third down and four. Here's running with Victorious. And does he have it? No, it didn't be short. Fourth down and one. He is short. Big play by Minneapolis defense. You know, Minneapolis Fishers keep Victor Victorious, the fourth round rookie. No, seventh round rookie, my bad. He was picked in the seventh round. Four of the six. The rush defense, remember, is ranked number seven, so Bob has the lead. And Victoria's kind of tearing it up. And it's an average run defense. Here is a 31 yarder. It's up and good. 10 to nothing here in Minneapolis in a shocking Cleveland defensive game. Cleveland's defense has been keeping this, keeping this third ranked Minneapolis Fishers offense quiet so far. Kick and Minneapolis will take it at the two. Sanchez on the return. Yeah, past the 25. A nice return as it cuts inside to the 29. Down in 10 at the 29. Let's we'll see what Minneapolis can do before halftime. 2 38 left to go on the clock. Down 10. Dackerson running. Tony Dackerson. Hit sticked at the 48, but 19 yards for the rookie quarterback who's known for staying alive in the pocket. First down in 10 North. I mean, not. God. First down in 10 Fishers. My bad. Yeah, I should keep saying these guys to colleges. 
Plus, I also recorded the North game and against West last night. First down and ten. Here's a run. Hoskins. Nice room for Ronaldo. Hoskins pinning away from a tackle. Two minute warning. We got two minutes left to go here for the first half in Minneapolis. Fisher's offense just needs to cash it in. They haven't been able to do that. They haven't been able to get field goal range. They have actually, but they haven't not able to kick it in. Got a turnover. But there's definitely stuff in the water here for Minneapolis to get back right back in this game. First down to 10. Here is Stackerson throwing. Incomplete could have been picked off. Would have been the second pick of the night. Jackson throw on second down to 10. Playing on 10, Dackerson. <laughs> Looking in the puck downfield. Got a man. And touchdown, Minneapolis. Wilbur Lamb. With the big six for the Minneapolis Fishers. Gets over the top of the defense. And there he goes. Watch him fly. He came to this game as the number two wide receiver in yards behind Albert Moore. And he might walk out with more. Now, he keeps this up. Been quiet so far until now. But for him, that's number four. Touchdown number four in the season. Here's the PAT to make it a three-point game. It's up and good. Four plays, 71 yards, and 48 seconds. And now Cleveland, they have a chance to try to put this game back into scores with a touchdown or just to make it a touchdown game with three more. We'll see if Minneapolis, his defense, has some tricks up their sleeve. Here it is. First down, so we're going to We're going to take this out to the 25. Frank Jog isn't here, so Mario Bowen doing the return. First down and 10. Here's Hastings searching, throwing. He's got the big tight end, Larson, to the 31. Second down, four, six yards on the game. Here's second down four. Throwing incomplete. No call. Looks like it might have been pass interference, but third down four. Here's third down four. Hastings. Searching. Throwing and caught over the middle. Mario Bowen to the 43. I'm out.
First down. 101, let's go here in Minneapolis. Just trying to make another drop. I mean, hard to try to make another drop for halftime. First down attempt. Hastings looking, searching, going, caught. Oh no! Hit on, he drops it. Good play on defense. Here's saying out 10. Hastings. 13. Pressure. Badger. To the 8. Number 8 on the season is 2nd on the night. 3rd down and 17. Big play by the Fishers. And they're just going to let clock take away. Third down, 17. That'd be the last play of the half. <laughs> Let's see timeout. They stop them, and they're going to victorious as Minneapolis is timeout number two. Fourth down, 11. Here's fourth down 11. Punt gonna be kind of short. Gonna be signal for 18 touchback. Two yard. I mean, two seconds left to go. And they're at the 18, so probably just a run. No big return on the punt turn. They just decided to take it from where it was. Let's see what they do here. I'm ready. First down 10, and it's a meal. That's going to be the first half. It's 10-7 here in Minneapolis. The Pirates have a lead, but will it be short-lived or not? That is to tell in the second half. Pirates rule through the air, but on the ground, it's been the Ronaldo Hoskins show. Can Cleveland's defense keep making big plays to keep them in it? Can the offense keep enough pace to stay up with this Fisher's offense? That was a question. Well, let's see. Can the Fisher snap back into it? Or will the Pirates ride away in the sunset? Here is a kick, and we're underway here in the second half. Pirates will start with the first. They need to set a tone because they're only up by three, and that's not where you want to be against the Fisher's offense. But Frank Jog, he's back, so hopefully he can help out this offense instead of the seventh-round pick, Victor Victorious. But he hasn't been really good, actually. Nine carries, 58 yards, 6.4. But just imagine how good Frank Jogs were if he had some of the holes. First down 10, running his jog, using the blocks, and he got a first down to the 38. Two carries, 19 yards for jog, as he gets a second carry here, and third.
Now I'm saying, Hastings, and give it off to Jog. Jog with some room. <clears throat> and we get to the 47 yard line. Second down, Aaron one. Second down and one. Here is Hastings. Searching, throwing, big play. And no. Not able to keep the feet in bounds. Caught it. Would have been a humongous play, but not able to keep the feet in bounds. Third down and one. Third down. Here's a run. And John gets the first down to the 49. Three yards on the play. First down. He's got four carries, 32 yards, averaging eight per carry. First down attempt 49 as the Cleve Hire trying to make a drive here. Here is Jog running, plowing Irwin Badger. Five yard pickup, second down and five. Ten out of five. Here's a run, jog, and he's gonna get hit forward for three yards. And it's third down and two. Short down. Let's see what they do here. Run for the third time on this first second down, or well, actually it would be probably fourth or fifth time in a row. But they've done a lot of running of recent. Let's see if it's gonna be a pass on third down. You throw down two. Running, jog, first down, big play, big hole, good blocks, first down. 32, and he coming out strong here on the first job in the second half. Break. Down 10, running, victorious, getting another carry still, 4 yards, 10, carry 62 yards, averaging 6.2 a carry, second down 6 as Ramirez gets the tackle. Second down six. Here's a run. Jog. First down. Duke all over the place to the 19. This run drive has been really good. Really destroying the Fishers. Who aren't even terrible at the run. Defending it. There's number seven. But this one offense in Cleveland, which is ranked not that high, number eight, is tearing it up. He's first down 10 and running victorious. Whoa! What is that from the seventh rounder? Second down in inches. Big play. He was breaking all sorts of tackles. Minneapolis cannot wrap up right now. Second down in inches. 
Here's a run. Jog to the outside. First down. No, wait. Did he actually get stopped? They spun him around, but no. First down goal. He did get there. And it looks like these running backs might be getting... Frank Jog might be getting tired, so maybe that's why they're bringing out Victorious a little more. Here's first and goal, running, jog to the four, and they're still running the ball. And Minneapolis is just standing a lot of blitzes at this point, goal line. Second and goal. Second and goal. Hastings throwing and end zone touchdown. So running all the time, but they take it in with an Amari Town rookie touchdown. Wow, what a drive. That was just really great. They did not want to get relocated, folks. They're fighting hard. Hastings is a 12 touchdown pass on the season. And for, Mar and for Amari Talent number three, a touchdown for the season. PAT is up and good. That drive, five minutes and 51 seconds, so long. 13 plays and 74 yards. What a long drive. Got to be one of the longest of the season, probably. A run just was not able to be stopped by Minneapolis, and then they passed it on the final play and touchdown. So probably Minneapolis was looking for another run because that's all they were doing. Well, now let's go in this third quarter of play in Minneapolis. They're down by 10. But still plenty of time left to go in this football game. 14 minutes and 9 seconds to be exact. We'll see what they can do. Here's a return by Sanchez. Nice spin move. Into the 29 yard line. First down and 10. For the Mishers. Jackson coming out. Trying to lead his guys to a game winner. I would. A winning game, which would put them at the 500 mark, and also in contention with Houston. As Houston right now has the number 68 as we speak, unless Minneapolis gets a win, then it's up to me, really, who I think has been more deserving. I don't even know. They're really good. Both teams play really good. I have to probably take division into consideration. Here's Hoskins running and. 34, and I'd have to take the strength of schedule and blah, blah, blah. 13 carries, 75 yards for Hoskins. Second down and a forward. We have Patrick for tackle. Now see if this Minneapolis rush game, which has been pretty good too under Ronaldo Hoskins. We get cooking up now too. Don't need to rush anything. Only two scores down. And it's still not into the fourth quarter, so don't rush yourself. Hoskins running. First down. Here's her down 10. Jackson throwing, caught, sideline, Green breaking a tackle and stretches himself for seven yards. Good play by Kent Green, second down and three. Second down three. Run up the middle, Hoskins. Gonna get to the 49, but no first down. Third down and one, so big play here. Third down one. Big play. What do we got here for the Fishers? Run. Hoskins fumble. 
Pirates pick it up. Big play. Patrick with the recovery. First down. Pirates. Robin, the Fishers. With that nasty hit. I don't even know. Wait. That, uh, was that a fumble? We're going to have to look at this. Maybe it's going to be a challenge. Oh, I think that might have been down. Oh, did you see the stiff arm from Patrick? But no, no challenge. 10 carries, 62 yards, 6.2 yards per carry for Frank Jog. No challenge fly, I don't think. Nope, yeah, no. No challenge from Minneapolis. First down and 10 at the 47 now for the Pirates. And a touchdown can go a long ways. It's actually sealing this one from. Especially the way the defense has been playing. This would be one of the most biggest upsets of the year. I was trying to get win number two. First down and 10. Here's a run, a jog. Again, it's to the 44. Second down and seven. Pirates already has the playoffs, as we mentioned earlier. So this game, all for pride and trying to get out of relocation. Them and the Charlotte Bats left, really. Unless they all went, or they both went out, which they really weren't. Two yards for Jog, third down and six. So big play here. They're trying to run some clock, so a pass play probably is in need. Third down six. Hastings, play action. Throwing in. Hauled in. Yes. Big play. First down at the 26 for the Pirates. Mario Bowen. Three catches, 35 yards. First down. Jeffrey Lee. And on the tackle, we couldn't get the leverage that time, but able to at least get him down. First down 10 now. 40 seconds up to go in the third quarter. Could be our final play of the third quarter, but depending on what kind of play it is. Here's a run. Running his jog. Nice juke move. And he gets it inside the red zone to the 12. And that should do it for the first, I mean, the third quarter. Frank Jogs dictated it all. Over 70 yards in this third quarter. And only on two drives. Man's going crazy. Just great running by Jog. And this is the stuff you won't see in Phoenix because he had to share character full of jokes. So in the long run, Jog and Jokes, they were great. They're probably they were the greatest running back duo in the league, but you just gotta if you have that much talent, they have to be by themselves. Four seconds, three seconds, two, one, and no snap. That's the end of the third quarter. It's 17 to 7. Cleveland knocking on the door for another touchdown. Minneapolis needs to play big here in this fourth quarter. They have that one touchdown from the long bomb to Logan Lamb, but those plays you can't rely on. So they need to actually make some good drives here. And defensive stand. A turnover would be the best thing for them right now. But even if they hold them to a field goal, that would be fine. They still need two touchdowns, though. But no touchdown can be led on this drive. They make the three score game. For Minneapolis' sake. The touchdowns happen here. It's probably be the game. Hastings looking to make that happen. Touchdown! Flag on the field. It doesn't matter. Pass interference on Keith Singleton. But it's going to be a touchdown. So we're going to look at this play. Because I didn't see who really got the touchdown. I saw the toe tap. In the back of the end zone. He finds Amari Talent for his second touchdown of the game. He had one last drive. And Amari Talent now leads the team in touchdowns at four. They knew he'd be a red zone throw at this height, but he's really been it. Four touchdowns. So that probably would put the Fishers away unless we saw an excellent fourth quarter change up for this team. 
It's an extra point to make it a... What would that be? It would be a 17-point game. And it's good. That drive, 5 plays, 46 yards, 2 minutes and 3 seconds. That's exactly what you want if you're a Pirate fan. Eat up a little clock and get the 6. Hastings, 2 for 2 and 28 yards on that drive. And a touchdown results. Frank Jog changed his offense so much. They've been able to throw, flow so much better. And now Minneapolis, any hope of a comeback, needs to bank on this fourth quarter. And especially this drive needs to be a ton setter. Needs to be a touchdown. No way to get anything less. Come back into this game. I think you need to set the tone right here right now. Especially the way they've been able to melt the clock on you. Making it the one. So run past the 20, make it to the 24 yard line. First down and 10, Fishers. 25 yards per turn for Carlson Sanchez. As they get ready to take this drive away, and Daxton, who hasn't played all that great tonight, needs to step it up here for the sports board. Try to get that comeback for his Fisher's team to keep them in this pep hunt. First down and ten. Dackerson throwing caught. It's Ivan Ifsen. First down, that's a big play. 20 yards. And Daxton now over 100 yards on the game. 12 yards after the catch for Ivan Ifsen. And that's exactly how you want to start it out. They need more plays just like that. Missed tackle by Riley. Was looking to put the hit stick on him. Misses. Big play for Ivan Ifsen after the catch. Third ranked offense. Really has to play like a third ranked offense right now. Prime time Monday Night Football. Three catch, 28 yards for Ifsen. Wolfen Manning with the tackle. Here's Daxon. Pressure, screen, it's Hoskins. Ronaldo Hoskins. And that's what I like. You're throwing the ball, but you're getting it to the playmaker who's got you all the plays you need today. That's Ronaldo Hoskins. Even though he fumbled, still give it to him. And that's great teamwork there. First down 10 as Gary Riley gets the tackle. Good job by Dexter not getting sacked in off to Hoskins. And sometimes you don't see the screens connect, but it seems like it works fine right there and got a nice yard after block set up. And got some nice yards. Good break everyone and get to a house call, but still really good play for the Fishers. This drive going exactly to plan so far. Not eating up so much clock and getting some big plays. It's first and ten. And you see that press coverage on Wilbur Lamb. Watch out. Daxton throwing another screen, and this one, he's not going to be as lucky. Four yards in the wrong direction. Cleveland's defense sniffed it out. Hoskins, four catches, 14 yards. There's a lot of bodies in that pile, but Gary Riley, we're going to give it to. Now, he actually was the tackle that was broken. Ben Mullins, he got the tackle, the final one. See, it was Riley that got the initial hit. Then I think it might have been. I don't know who got the second tackle, but they missed. Mullen's got him down. So big play in there for the Cleveland defense after giving up big plays. And they're playing in a little bit softer defense, you can tell. But still trying to play some intensity. Second and 14. Throwing is Daxton. Got a man, and I thought that was picked off for a second, but it's Carlson Sanchez. Third down and two for the deep threat wide receiver. His first catch of the night, go for 12 yards. Third down and two is Ben Mullins tackles him. He's been pretty nice at the tackling tonight. The third down. So third down and two. What can this Minneapolis Fishers offense do? Daxton. Rowing. He's got his back. Ruben Page. Fourth rounder out of the north. Fourth rounder out of south. Set the Set the record for college rushing yards in a game. Gary Riley's going to get the tackle first down and 10. Fishers. Oh, 
First down and ten. Dackerson. Looking to throw. Tony Dackerson. Throw it and no. Incomplete. 14 to 20, 138 yards. A touchdown and a pick. It's second down and ten. 707 left to go. Need the touchdown pretty quickly here. They've been moving it nicely, but some clock still has been burnt. Job is going to happen, but we're burning up low more than needed. Probably needs to touch down these next couple plays. Don't want six, under six seconds left to go. And they're going to run it. Surprisingly, Hoskins, 18 to 18, gets three yards there. Third down, seven, 17 carries. 84 yards for Ronaldo Hoskins tonight. Roy Cleon on the tackle. Third down, seven. Big play coming up for this Fisher's offense. And if you get stopped here, you think about the field goal that I think you have to go for at this point. You're too close to the end zone for not. Flag on the play. I think there's jumping on the line. Yes, that's what it is. So third down 12, even bigger now. As false start. I don't know who it's on, but third down 12 underway at the 23 now. So depending on actually how far you get this, maybe you do have to kick it. Not really what you want to see there. Third down and 12 now for this Fisher's offense. Can Daxon, the rookie, make a big play? Going, oh, he's got his back. Hoskins, powering, but can't get too much. Gets it to the 19-yard line. And he ought to go for it. It's close enough where you can try to make a play. If not, that's the game. Fourth down and eight. Austin Shelton in on the tackle with kind of a combined tackle there. See who he's with. Tackled. Shelton and Cleon were on the tackle. It's fourth down eight, and you got to go for it. No excuses. Time is not on your side. You're going for this thing. You have to. Yes, they are. Dakerson offense. Last shot to keep in this game. If this doesn't work, kiss that playoff probably goodbye. Dakerson throwing. End zone. Incomplete. The Pirates. The defensive stand, and that probably won them the game. What a defensive stand for this team tonight. Looking for Lamb in the end zone, can't hook up. He didn't necessarily need a touchdown, but he was kind of open there. But a good play by the defense rounding up to make the tackle. Here comes out Hastings, 10 for 16, 154 yards and three touchdowns. He's had a day. Really helping him. Making him more, look more like the second overall pick. I guess you could say. Also helping him for Rookie of the Year award. He's still in, tech, technically still in running for that. So is Dackerson, but tonight, not helping him too much. First down and 10, running his jog. And Minneapolis still technically in the game, but... They need more of a miracle than they already did. Second down and six. Here is a run with Jog and almost forced to fumble. Could have had a chance. Two yards since they're down four. Third down four. Pacing zone five wide. Rowing caught Larson. And that, yeah, it's done. Game's done. Fishers have lost it. They're going to go four and six. They say don't call the game over before it's over, but folks, it's over. You're welcome to stay on the channel. But you already know who's the winner. First down and 10. 4 11 left to go as the Fishers don't care to use the timeout. Jog running. Breaks the tackle to the 36 yards. 
He's trying to get 100 yards still. Came in at the second half, that'd be something. 16 carries, 89 yards from. Second down, 7. He's really been the backbone to Cleveland finishing off this game with the win. If Jog wasn't here, I think the Fishers probably could have maybe tried this game and got back into it. Well, they tried, but got back into it, I mean. Second down, 7. Jog running and stopped this time to 34. And go back to yards, third down and nine. Big play by Jeffrey Lee. Third down and nine for the Pirates. I'll probably see another pass trying to get some more clock off. What a game for the Cleveland, Cleveland team. Setting the tone here. Trying to keep themselves out of relocation. But they're still going to be in relocation status because the Bats did win this week. So they're there by default. Off record with the worst record in the league. Me 2 and 8. But still, third down and 9. Let's see if they keep the clock running. Play action. Hastings throwing incomplete. So 2.42 left. They're going to have to punt it on fourth down and 9. Hastings is probably going to be his final stats unless we see Cleveland's defense shot another drive out. Almost picked off. That would have been terrible for great of days. Hastings had Ramirez was there. Larson kind of started loose of his grip. He was there. The presence of him probably made Ramirez a little scared. He's just a towering tight end. Amazing guy. Freak athlete. Fourth down and nine. Here's the punt. Taken in from the 5, it's going to bounce in from the 5. Go to the end zone and they'll start the 20 yard line. First down and 10. Dackerson. Rowing. He's trying to make some kind of drive here before the game's over. Stays in bounds. It's Ivoniston. Three yards. 250 yards for this Minneapolis offense tonight. Four carries. I mean, four catches and 31 yards for Ivoniston. So far tonight. 210 left on the clock. We'll see if they snap a play before the 10 minute warning. And they will. It's going to be a run, and Hoskins is met the line with the 21. And it is the 2 in the morning, 24 to 7 here in Minneapolis as the Pirates are going to come away with their second win. An upset game on Monday Night Football. I had no idea this was going to happen. I thought the Minneapolis Fishers would probably beat them by like at least 14. Let's get off the field. Third down nine. Fishers throwing up top, Lamb hauled in, helping his stats to the 50, and first down and 10, Fishers. Lamb, we haven't seen a lot of him tonight, but he's still open, Lamb. He's going to get those catches. Three catches, 74 yards for him. Probably will fall a little bit in the um, receiving yards department against other receivers because they both had big days. So he can probably still be number three, though, no, four. He still had a decent day. Here's another... Big shot, and he's got Sanchez. Touchdown, Fishers. Well, there's a 15-yard touchdown to end the night, and they could have played like this all day or all night, and they definitely would have had the game. This is what I was expecting, these kind of big plays. But Cleveland, they don't care anymore. They know they've got the win. But there's Sanchez, touchdown number five on the season. PAT, they can tack this one on, it's up, and it is good. 14 to 24, 4 plays, 81 yards, and a minute and 5. And now, it's a 10-point game. 
Well, technically, you could say there is a chance for Minneapolis to get back in this game. But knowing the onside kicks in Madden, it's not going to happen. This gets a little more interesting, I guess. Makes it look a little closer than it really was. The Pipes dominated this game, guys. Here's the onside kick attempt to keep them in the game, but no. Taken in by Cleveland as expected. And they'll start to 45. Jonathan Anderson with the return with the good fielding. First down and ten. Here is a run. Jog, jog, weaving. To the 45 yards. And there's a timeout for Minneapolis. Still trying to stay in this game. You gotta love the effort. They would have been really in this game if they could have got that touchdown on that one drive. It would have been a three-point game then. We would be talking. But we aren't really anymore because they didn't. And it's a ten-point game. Second now five and a first down. We'll end it. Here's a run, John. For the 39, second time out used. One twenty left to go, third down and four. We're down and four. Hastings running, jog first down. That's the game. Neils should be the rest of it. As Minneapolis is the final timeout, 10 point game. 24 14 will be your final. First down and 10. The Neil formation is underway here for Cleveland. And that's it. You'll kneel it. Second and 11. One more kneel should do in for the Minneapolis Fishers. They're going to take their, the loss here and go to 4 and 6. And for the Pirates, it will be 2 and 8. So, Houston will have the sixth seed, and Houston fans are ecstatic. They can't believe this upset either. Best game. 24-14, your final. I'm trying to stay out of the location status, and they help themselves with this game here. We get oh, at least one more win. Let's look at their... Actually, we can't look at their opponents in the chance that he's got a schedule. My bad. Third down, 13. And no one kneeled on it. Just surprised me to took another kneel. That's again. 24 14 is going to say it again. Fishers lost. Upset. Probably the upset of the week. I can't remember everything else that happened this week. Maybe the power of the musicians. That could be an upset of the week. Who knows? Oh no, wait. Gill Monsters and Enforcers. That could be an upset. Really, there's a lot of upsets this week. Holy cow. Made his name one, though. Predators, you could call that an upset of the week, but really not. They're both really good. That's an earthquake, maybe, probably not an upset. But yeah, there's at least three upsets this week, depending on what you think is an upset. Three major upsets. Big bombs from Jackson in the last part of the game. But really, it was dominated by Cleveland.
pretty much all throughout. Frank Jog, it won't end. I, wait, did he end with 100? I don't know. We're going to have to check, actually. I want to check that before. I'll let you guys go. Before I end the video. Or Monday Night Prime Time game. Saxon, they gave it their all, but they might have to kiss the playoffs goodbye with that loss. Very upset here in Minneapolis. Let's look. Frank Jog, he ends off with 104, so he did get 100. But that's it. I'll see you guys for the podcast.